for the Ghanaian Times. This morning says senior minister tests positive for COVID-19 as Ghana's case load reaches 21,968. 13 final year students, SHS in four schools test positive for COVID-19. Also 500 CSOs wants president to rescind decision on Domelovo to take his accumulated leave. There's been a back and forth there uh, with some juggling with the law. TCH performs 550 fistula surgeries out of 600 cases. The um, Daily Graphic, Ghana Health Service sounds alarm bells. 400 COVID-19 cases recorded daily. And day, President firmly in charge of the state, Information Minister says so, and Bring Back Domelovo campaign launched. Waig releases WASI timetable. Examinations begin on July 20. President pledges support to Valentina Mintes ICC duties. The Daily Guide this morning says EC registers 2 million voters in one week. Senior minister is COVID-19 positive. Baptism of fire greets NDC running mate. Professor Nana Jeno Pokwajima. The Finder newspaper, big boost for COVID-19 testing. Enough consignment of reagents arrive in Ghana. Dr. Patrick Kumar Bwaje uh, says so. He's the director general of the Ghana Health Service. Also, reverse Domelovo's proceed on leave decision. CSOs tell president. Transport fares to go up by 15% from July 11. And yesterday already, the drivers had started charging their own fares. Uh, some are at neck-breaking uh, rates. The Rebecca Foundation commissions two libraries in two communities. That's good news there. Thank you very much, uh, Mama Rebecca. And the BNFT this morning says COVID-19 heightens debt repayment challenges for borrowers as MPLs, non-performing loans, begin to inch up. Reinstate nuisance taxes to fill revenue gap. Uh, the TJC is advising tighten tax laws on public servants' benefits and curtail unwanted exemptions. And finally, transparency in payment needed to keep us in business. Pharma suppliers to the NHI. Uh, my guest this morning via Zoom will be Dr. Clement Apak, and he is the MP for Bolsa South. And also, we're told that we'll be joined by the Honorable Pius Enam uh, Hajde, uh, who will join us in studio Um well, we'll make a phone call to him. Too. Okay, so let's connect with Dr. Park. Dr. Park is uh, on the screen now. Doc, good morning, and thank you very much for your time. Solu? Hello, mm. Nalongwa. Kubasa? Kubasa. Kubasa. I'm a boy. Well. And Doc? Well, he was, uh, I mean, uh, Johnny. Yes, sir. Let me say uh, good morning to you and good morning to uh, viewers. Mm. We are in the new normal, so I anticipate that uh, viewers would understand uh, the best effort that we are all putting in, including your own uh, media journal, uh, to ensure that we, we get uh, some reprieve with regards to this uh, fast spreading uh, battle that we are all having to contend with. But it's only fair that uh, I add my voice to acknowledge uh, a very special man uh, of repute who has contributed greatly to the people of Bursa myself included, I speak about the Honorable uh, Daniel Sain. I heard you mention uh, well wishes uh, from uh, his family. I happen to be one of them. Only two days ago, I was uh, in Tamale to visit him, and uh, I wish him well. I pray for the good Lord to continue to guide him uh, and move him from strength to strength. Uh, he's an asset, and we are all very proud of his contributions uh, to Ghana and to the people of uh, Busu. Earlier this morning, I was uh, upbeat about some uh, independent or supposed independent parliamentary candidate in the central region, someplace in Asin South, who had organized a rally despite the wide condemnation that the Honorable pa uh, the Carlos Ahinkra had received. And he goes ahead to put together a rally, disregard for social distancing, wearing of nose mask. And I'm thinking, with all the numbers that are shooting up and all the records that are, we are being showed that COVID-19 is getting worse by the day, somebody who wants to lead the people and join you in Parliament is doing a thing like that. What comes into your mind when you see that? Are we winning? Are we losing? Well, what comes to my mind is that leadership is not taking responsibility by uh, leading by example. And uh, it is very unfortunate because I don't believe that people truly appreciate the type of uh, 
situation that we are dealing with, not only as a country, but as a species. Uh, this uh, pandemic uh, is uh, ravaging every part of the world. And even here in Ghana, we have seen the numbers grow exponentially. Mm. As we speak now, the daily infection rates, and as far as the figures are concerned, are in excess of uh, 400. There are times when the reports have even indicated uh, 900 and uh, beyond. So when you have persons who are leading or are seeking to lead the people, uh, acting recklessly and uh, not, you know, you know, being uh, uh, cautious of, of what they are supposed to do. Uh, clearly, we, we need to hold them accountable. And, and I say so because this seems to be a, a, a trend. And, and mm. excuse my language, but it looks like, you know, the entities who were supposed to have set the proper example mm -hmm. have failed to do that. And it's allowing subordinates uh, to do the same and feel that they can get away with it. How, how do you mean? Uh, it, uh, hello? How do you mean? Well, it, it, it all began with uh, what we saw during the, the, the primaries of uh, the governing MPP, where, you know, people were out campaigning, they were holding events without due attention to the directives of precautionary measures. Indeed, many flouted the president's own directive. And when many of us had thought that they were going to be held accountable, mm. as was in the case of, you know, a pastor in his congregation, I believe about a number of drivers who were also uh, taken on by the law. Uh, what we had was uh, a slap on the wrist. The, the president, after a week, uh, didn't even condemn them. He only said that that should not happen again. Right. Uh, thereafter, we, we, we saw the videos and we became aware of the fact that the Honorable Carlos Ahinkra uh, had also acted recklessly, knowing fully well that he had the virus and knowing fully well that he was supposed to have isolated himself, was out and about visiting police stations and mingling with people. And as we speak now, if the reports are accurate, a member of his campaign committee has lost his life as a result of, you know, such reckless conduct and behavior. Mm. And so when you then have another person from the same stock who has decided to go independent, going on to organize a rally mm. at a time when we are all preaching social distancing, asking for the protocols, including the usage of sanitizers, washing mm. our hands with running water, and using the nose mask is concerned. I think it is about time that we begin seeing some action. The CIs shouldn't just be there mm. for the sake of the CI. Mm. And the application of the law should not be selective. But so far, that is what is happening. And okay. when that happens, mm. the copycat syndrome sets in. If one person is not punished, why should the other person be punished? And I oh. think that is the conundrum okay. that we are facing. But ultimately, this is as a result of lack of leadership. Okay, let's uh, connect with the Honorable Pius Enama Hajide. He's a, the Deputy Minister, a Deputy Minister for Information of the Republic. Pius, good morning. Thank you for your time. Yeah, good morning. Uh, thank you for having me. Great. Pius, I'm sure you've seen the videos making round of uh, uh, a disappointed candidate who had intended to contest on the tickets of the MPP. He says he's going independent. And with all the direction from the president that this must not happen again, he goes ahead on the 4th of July, someplace in Asinga Rosso, to organize a political rally. No respect for social distancing, no wearing of face masks, and up until now, nothing seems to have happened to him. Are we winning the fight? Are we losing it? What could be the problem? Well, thank you very much. Uh, please advise me as to the individual uh, you are speaking to. Let me confess that uh, I am not privy to the video that you speak of. Okay. Uh, but for me, irrespective of who is involved, a failed uh, parliamentary candidate, a member of the NPP, a member of the NDC, a member of the religious, a member of traditional authority, mm. for me, it is irrelevant to the matter. The fact of the matter is that there are laws and regulations that have been uh, formulated to protect public health mm. and to safeguard our um, a, a collective existence as a people. And that cannot and should not mm. uh, be compromised on the altar of political ambition. And so uh, for me, uh, if an individual is in breach of the regulations, mm. uh, we must direct our concerns towards law enforcement. Mm. It is their job. And I think that 
the, the law enforcement have the complete and uh, unalloyed support of uh, government to implement the law, and they have uh, shown their capacity to implement the law. Mm. People have been arrested, some have been prosecuted, and so I think that they should continue to do that uh, without fear or favor. What is mm. wrong is wrong. Uh, having said that, I quickly also want to add that I have also seen very disturbing videos of some very, very senior persons within our space. Okay. Uh, and if you indulge me, mm. I can also place on record uh, the campaign activities of the former president, Mr. John Dramani Mahama. I've right. seen videos right. of him uh, in the north, videos of him uh, in parts of the Volta region, mm -hmm. and absolutely no regard for the protocols of social distancing, mm. uh, wearing of masks, mm. and, and so on and so forth. Yesterday, a photo was released uh, on uh, their social media handles, mm -hmm. uh, and all of them, including the former president, Mr. Mahama, mm. uh, all held their nose masks in their hands rather than wearing them over their mouths and noses. And I mm. thought that that sent a wrong signal coupled with the fact that he's going out there uh, on a regular basis, mm. uh, guarding people, let me admit that, not in their thousands and thousands like we see with uh, regular political rallies, but mm. some forms of gathering, but no, absolutely no regard mm. for the protocols of social distancing. Okay. And all of this must uh, uh, catch the attention of law enforcement mm. And they must act without fear or fever. Pius, law enforcement seems to be tilted towards one side, the low and the bubbly. They are the ones who, you know, usually would find themselves on the wrong side of the law. For example, that pastor or those who are not wearing their face masks in the Ashanti region who are asked to clean their gutters and sweep and some others. But when it comes to political figures, we can mention uh, Dr. Clement Kapal had recently made reference to the MPP primaries, uh, Mr. Carlos Sahinkra, you are talking about ex-president Mahama. Um, there's Kofi Damte, who's also a disappointed uh, person who wanted to get into parliament on the ticket of the MPP. Now he is going independent. Now, all these people, these strands of people I've mentioned who have a certain political exposure have not been brought before the law. Is the law being fair? Well, that's why we continue to um, uh, encourage law enforcement to act without fear or favor. Mm. Uh, the law should not be biased towards a certain class of people and uh, seek to protect them. And let me also put on record that any member of the MPP uh, by our constitution who decides to go independent mm. forfeits membership automatically that's right. to lose membership. That is what forfeiture means. That's right. And that's just for, for public education. But having moved on from there, I think that, for instance, Honorable Carlos Ahinkra, mm. uh, who acted admittedly, uh, uh, who exercised great indiscretion, in my view, mm. has had to pay uh, the big price of losing the high office of deputy minister. And for me, mm. the president deciding to accept the resignation, and he himself, in fact, offering that resignation, for me, it's a good sign that he saw it coming. That that's a have slap, a that's a have slap a on the wrist. That's Say a again. slap on the wrist. That's what the public think. They think it's a slap on the wrist. No, I don't think that losing the, 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 the office of uh, deputy minister is a slap on, on, the ring. That, uh, on, on the wrist. It doesn't mean that uh, subsequent action cannot be taken. But honestly speaking... I think that that is also some heavy price to pay. But like I said, mm. uh, even if there has to be subsequent action, let us direct our concern towards the proper quarters. But, but, mm. but, but importantly, okay. importantly mm -hmm. for me, honesty in this discussion is key. Uh, selectivity and focusing on uh, only members of the ruling uh, uh, party, mm. and you speak of our primaries, and let me say that our primaries were properly regulated. It was decentralized so that we do not exceed the hundred mm. uh, 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 the uh, the hundred limit. We held the elections at the electoral basis. So the videos, the so the videos package. that we saw, so the videos that we saw circulating, and I want us to have a dispassionate conversation 
about this. The videos that we saw, which has been acknowledged on many fronts, are the reality on the ground. And the ripple effect, somebody would say, is here for us to know. For example, uh, bless the soul of the late uh, Sir John. He was an old Tafo with uh, uh, Vincent Asifwa campaigning with him. We saw the videos. Soon thereafter, we're told he died of COVID. So the reality is here with us. And I'm saying whether it is NDC or MPP, the axe must fall where it must fall, which you have agreed. Now, the question is, is it your opinion that the law enforcement agencies are acting selectively? Well, that's why I, if, I, 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 I've said that the law enforcement must act impartially and without fear or favor. Right. The narrative, however, is that when you are holding a political party responsible for something, mm. you must hold the political party responsible for what it has control over. Right. If you are talking about individuals campaigning, mm. the party directly has the rules that I have just spoken to. Mm. And I think that it is also important that we commend the party for, first of all, uh, taking the position that it has taken. However, at the individual level, mm. we also have seen that there have been some breaches of the protocols, and that has been uh, admitted at high places, including even at the level of His Excellency the President, that at the personal level, for instance, mm. somebody wins an election, mm. and out of jubilation and enthusiasm, they throw costume to wind. Mm. That one, you have to hold that individual or group of individuals responsible and law enforcement must, must act in that regard. Mm. But to attempt to hold the party corporate responsible for the uh, behavior of, a, of an individual because it was subsequent uh, to uh, the, the party program of electing parliamentary candidates mm. may be stretching the argument. If that were to be the case... Le and leadership holding, is cost. Leadership is cost. All else is just effect. Yeah, but the leadership in this case is that the party has provided all that needs to be provided. At the personal level, there may have been indiscretion. In the case that I made reference to, okay. in, the case, in the case that I made reference to, I think that the leader who has been former president, mm. the leader who is now the flag bearer of the NDC, and in fact the leader of the NDC himself, is involved in public gatherings mm -hmm. that are not paying attention to the preventive etiquettes of social distancing and the wearing of masks. Okay. And I'm saying that mm. we must uh, uh, condemn all these occurrences across board mm. and encourage law enforcement to act without fear or favor. It doesn't matter whether you are a disappointed parliamentary candidate, mm. a former member mm. of the NPP, you are a former president or a leader of the, the main opposition party. Mm. Once you are in breach of the law, you are in breach of the law, and you must, uh, you must answer the relevant question. Okay, hold on. Doc, Doc, let me come to you at this point. Is the law being selective again? I ask you, and Pio says the law must work anyhow. He's mentioning your flag bearer for flouting the same thing we're talking about here. And again, we'll go back to what you said earlier. Leadership is cost, all else is effect. Is the law being applied op uh, evenly? Well, first of all, I, I find it very interesting that uh, Pios uh, has uh, decided to rephrase and uh, answer the question that you posed. But like it or not, when we speak about leadership in the country, we all know the person in charge of running the affairs of this country, mm. and that is President Abuquadu. His own conduct, his attitude, his behavior, and those around him has shown very clearly that he has not shown leadership. And look, to be short and straightforward. The law is being selective in this application because there is no reason why all those videos that you made references to, which are still available, could not have been used as a basis of tracing and bringing to book those MPP parliamentary candidates and sitting MPs mm -hmm. who blatantly disregarded the directives of the president himself. Mm -hmm. And in fact, all the president could do a week after intense public criticism mm -hmm. was to tell them literally to go and see no more. And he, he tries to exonerate the reckless conduct of uh, <laughs> Honorable Carlos Ahinkwe. Mm. I mean, truly, this is a man who knew 
And, and that is the emphasis. He knew full well that he had tested positive. Mm. And yet he chose to go out and endanger the lives of many, many other Ghanaians. And what did the presidency do? They gave him a choice, either to resign or be fired. In an instant like this. Well, the man resigned, the man resigned on his own, we're told. He wrote a letter to say he is resigning. But, 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 but is that good leadership? Your minister defies your directive. He endangers the lives of Ghanaians. And you give him an option to resign. That is how you show the what else could What else could we have looked at? You fire him and you let the Lord deal with him. And yet, what is going on is that excuses are being made that because he resigned as a, a minister, that is sufficient punishment. So then who does Pius expect to be punished by law enforcement when persons who know, knew that he did it, went out deliberately, intentionally, well thought out, wickedly and recklessly, and indeed callously, to mingle with citizens. So look, if we are going to apply the law, we should apply the law. But when you make excuses, and then when you only apply the law, when it comes to persons who don't belong to a particular you know, entity, clearly that, that is not fair, and that is not the way to go. Mm. I thank you very much. Pius, take a final word on this, and let's switch the topics. Um, Doc, uh, Doc, Doc insists that there's more that leadership can do, I mean, especially from the presidency. We must see uh, some bit of action from, from your end so that this does not continue again, like the president said. This must not happen again. It's happened one too many times after the president said it must not happen. It, it, is it that the people don't take the president's word for it or what? Well, I think that uh, doctor's view of leadership uh, is quite limited. I disagree with him that uh, Mr. John Mahama, former president, flag bearer, and indeed the operational witness, leader of the NDC, mm. cannot also... Pa Pius, uh, you may have to speak up be... a bit for me. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Mm. I'm saying that I hold the view that... Uh, my good friend's uh, view of leadership in this context is rather limited. Uh, I think that the former president and leader of the NDC, if that's what their constitution describes him, is also a leader who must be worth his sort and who must also set good examples. Mm. When he acts with utter disregard for the protocols of the citizens of Ghana, mm -hmm. Whether they are members of his party or not is irrelevant and endangers their lives and exposes them to public health hazards. Mr. John Mohammed's conduct ought to be condemned by all discerning people. Mm. And law enforcement must be encouraged to take action relative to him, just like relative to anybody, mm. whether the person is a member of parliament, a former member of the NPP, or a field. Mm parliamentary aspirants. Mm -hmm. And I have said that we should be honest and truthful. And if you are looking at leadership by example, mm -hmm. I think that the name that should come to all of our minds is His Excellency the President. The President goes out there in public wearing his mask. Mm. Even at the risk of just exposure, even after having tested negative for COVID-19, just okay. because the President uh, has been exposed out of the abundance of caution. Mm -hmm. The president has taken this uh, exemplary decision mm -hmm. of uh, isolating himself or quarantining himself, whichever word you want to use. No, the, that the, that it was self-isolation. That's what's contained in the release that came yes, out. Yes, yeah. that's right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm saying that this is a, 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 an example that is worth emulating. And I have made the point that law enforcement must work, but we must eschew selectivity and we must uh, move away from this pressure of wanting to maybe give the dog a bad name and hang it and for that matter, not tell the truth in the manner in which it ought to have been told. Mm. The fact is that uh, after the NPP conference, mm -hmm. people in high places, including even His Excellency the President, admitted to some of the failings at the personal and individual level. Mm. At the corporate level, 
we all agree that the party took steps and took decisions that were in conformity with the COVID-19 protocols. what is the essence of the, the, the attempt, if you will, to exonerate the MPP party from all of what is happening, but to deliberately <laughs> mention that the NDC and its leader were reckless and to say that the MPP party put in all the measures. What is the essence of the measures you put in place if it did not work to the general good that we were all hoping, the result that we're seeking? What's the essence of the measures then? And, 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 and you see, I'll answer your question by referring to an earlier comment you made about Sir John. Mm. And uh, if care is not taken, the impression may have been created that Sir John may have contracted the virus during the process of campaigning at Afu, that has not been established. Mm. Uh, it could have been any, it could have been from anywhere else, from his work. Sir John, everybody who knows him knows that he's the people's Sir John. He's always receiving visitors, he's always out there in the field. And so uh, the point of contraction uh, could be anywhere. Uh, and the point I am making is that it is important that at the institutional level, political parties take steps to protect not only their members, but the general public. And so I am expecting that if the former uh, president and mm. flag bearer of the NDC okay. is going to engage in a public event that involves gathering people, mm. the party should take uh, the steps to uh, provide the amenities and ensure mm. that the protocols are obeyed. And we don't even see uh, the party at the institutional level providing any amenities such as Veronica Bucket and so on and so forth. You're, you're assuming? I have seen the videos, my brother. Mm. And I haven't seen a Veronica Bucket. In fact, I haven't heard of the NBC uh, 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 even announcing that uh, gatherings should be limited to maybe electoral area or polling stations. I haven't even heard that. Okay. But compare that to the NPP, the party says that no gatherings should be held at the constituency level where we get larger crowds, mm. but that all uh, gatherings should uh, now remain within electoral areas, which makes us able to fall below the hundred, uh, uh, the limit okay. of 100 Okay, thank you. Uh, let, 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 let's bring in Doc, uh, and then we take a break and return to, to switch the topic. Uh, Doc, let me give you a no, minute no, yeah. to, so we can... Yes. Mm. I thought, I thought that would have the right of reply. No. Oh, hold on, hold, hold on, dog, for me. Uh, uh, Pius, you, you just had a right of reply. Oh. No, but he spoke before I spoke, so he cannot, he cannot come in with the... So, anyway, let, let's, so he, let's go on. So fine, he spoke, fine, then I invited I you, I gave back that's to him. Fine. I've come back to him. Let me go back that, to him. That's so, fine. Yes, that's great. fine. Thank you. That's fine. Doc, I'll give, uh, you, well, I'll give you a minute uh, and then we'll go for a break. Uh, what is Pius's problem? Pius, you know, Pius says that your party has not shown the kind of leadership that you're demanding for. That, for example, you have not made the announcement from your party's office or your leadership to suggest that Veronica Bucket and a limitation of the numbers and to restriction of where the meetings could be had and the numbers that could part partake in the meetings. Rather, you have left it all and is a free-for-all thing and maybe you should be learning from the MPP. To the contrary, I mean, he is fully aware that his party, his government, his president, uh, our president, is uh, is complicit in, in all of this. Because wow. if he had acted decisively when the protocols were being breached by members of uh, his, his party and uh, even ministers of his party, I believe that that would have sent a very strong signal to the rest of the population. But are, are you even aware that in all of this that... Uh, he is uh, trying to weave and then uh, spin. Mm. Uh, the fact still remains that even when the president was being acclaimed, he wasn't even wearing a mask, what was he? So, well, I mean, there is enough blame to go around, but the buck stops with the president. Mm. Look, it is the MPP government which has supported the idea of a new voters' register, which in itself has become an avenue for the massive breach of the protocol. So if we are going to apportion blame, the blame ultimately resides and must be heaped on President Akufuado and the MPP, certainly not the NDC. Now, if, if beyond the blame game, what do we get? Uh, because the cases are rising. Yesterday, Dr. Um, Patrick Abouaji said we're getting 400 cases 
on a daily basis. And that's alarming. Alarming now, for example, that our children are back in school. Now Is that alarming. Now, no, I, I'll come to you, Pius, shortly. Now alarming that uh, the, the transport operators are threatening to uh, recongregate the people in the buses. Now alarming that we have seen the rallies going on with careless abandon. We should be worried. Beyond the blame, what's there, Doc? Yes, we, we definitely should be worried because if you look at the numbers and uh, the manner in which they are rising, the extent to which we are getting reports, as you indicated earlier, even including uh, campuses, uh, senior high school campuses, uh, we, we, we are indeed getting to a crisis point. Unfortunately, uh, and this is the honest truth, government has failed in, in, in leading the charge and governance to come along in the fight against COVID-19. And indeed, the Minister for, for Health was very blatant in saying that the president is tired. He is tired. The numbers keep rising. So it is very clear that now citizens must be conscious of their responsibility, of taking personal responsibility. For those we have put in charge of steering affairs of the state have blatantly told us that when it comes to this virus at this time, they simply don't know what else to do. How, how, have, you helped, how have you helped the government to achieve what they seek to achieve? How have you done that? Well, as a member of parliament, and, and even as uh, we all know, the, the, the flag bearer of the, of the NDC, we have all procured the needed supplies. We've we distributed them to uh, various facilities, uh, my particular case to my, my constituents, uh, giving them the needed nose masks, I'm giving them the kabakas, I'm giving them sanitizers, I've shared some to uh, almost every chip compound in my constituency, and I've even produced an advertisement. Uh, if you like, a, a jingle in the local language of bully, which I've paid for since the outbreak of this uh, virus uh, to be played on a local radio station uh, in, in Fumbisi. So we are all doing our best uh, to address uh, this matter. But I believe that when you give people power, it hmm. comes with responsibility. So they have the onerous task of leading the child. When they are failing, hmm. we can also do our best to ensure that we protect ourselves. Okay. But there is no way we can excuse mm. the entities that we have resourced mm. for the public's best being empty for them to help us stay safe, train their hands in the air and saying that they are tired. <laughs> How can they say they are tired? It is their responsibility. Okay. Doc, I thank you very much. Pius, please note uh, the, the two issues. We'll take a quick break. When we return, you get a right of reply first and then we'll switch the topic. Stay with us. This is TV3 New Day. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back, and uh, let's connect back with uh, our guest, uh, Pius Enamajite, is the Deputy Minister for Information of the Republic, and also Dr. Clement Park, who's MP for Bosa South. Pius will have the right of reply at this point. Pius, uh, welcome, and thank you for joining us via Zoom now. Um, so, Doc had made uh, some quick comments uh, before the break, and I wanted you to quickly have a right of reply to them, and then we'll move on from there. Yeah, Johnny, I mean, there's not much to say in response to what uh, uh, Dr. Clementa Park has said. What do you expect? The NDC, they are very loud at blaming no credible alternatives. They complain. They are whining. They will never suggest to you what they would have done differently because they are completely at sea as to what is happening. And so a talk they say is cheap. You can go on and complain and, and, and go on and on and on. Uh, but when pushed as to what would you have done differently, what credible alternative exists, they have found one thing, they are completely at sea. We are quite clear in our minds that we have to continue with the public education. We have to uh, complement that with enforcement. Mm. And that is why the president has gone to parliament on the instruction of the president, the minister has gone to parliament to have the law passed. Uh, to be able to implement the necessary regulations. And we have passed CI after CI. We have not only left it at the legal interventions, mm. we have done massive social intervention, provided water, provided electricity. We are motivating our health workers uh, with the insurance packages, with their uh, tax holidays, with the... Uh, uh, the other incentive packages that we have rolled out. Pius, the free water uh, and free electricity have ended. Come. Free water, free electricity has ended. Well, but we have done that. So I'm only reporting to you what this government has done. Okay. And I'm saying that 
when faced with similar crises, we did not see any uh, 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 social responsive interventions from the NDC. What, what similar so crisis? Have, have we had COVID before? Not, not a health crisis. We have, we have had several other crises in this country. Okay. We have had Doomsaw, for instance, was a crisis. Mm. We had the, the twin disasters of the June 3rd, fire and flood. These mm. were all crises. They were disasters in their own right. This COVID-19 may be health-related, but it is also a crisis. Just like it is killing people, Doomsaw killed people. Just like it is destroying businesses, Doomsaw destroyed businesses, and so on and so forth. I'm saying to you that we have risen to the task and we are not only leading through the uh, legal and uh, procedural approaches, we are also uh, showing responsibility. Okay. Uh, thank uh, the people thank you. At the point of their need. So thank you. I think that to go to the NDC to look for alternatives, uh, uh, I mean, you, let's not waste our time. Let, thank you. Let, let's go to uh, Dr. Clement Park. Doc, welcome. And uh, let me spotlight your video at this point and, and dovetail into another angle of the conversation, which is education for me. Now, uh, Franklin Kujo made a statement. He says that the president who asks the children to go back to school is self-isolating based on medical advice that somebody within his inner perimeter could have contracted the virus or has contracted it. The education minister is doing the same at the University of Ghana Medical Center upon, upon suspicion that somebody close to him may have had it. We don't know if the two gentlemen have the virus or not. But the children are in school even when their colleagues are getting the virus and we are insisting that they must stay in school to write the exam. You are a ranking member of the Committee on Education in Parliament. What do you make of the decision to keep the children in school when their parents are not in agreement and their police guards, for example, at Accra Girls, preventing parents from getting to their children? Well, uh, Johnny, let me say it's uh, good to be back. I was having a, a few technical challenges, but uh, they've been resolved. Um, quite clearly, I think that we are approaching a crisis stage. And uh, I will leave the comments that uh, Pius made to the judgment of the good people of Ghana. They know fully well how abysmally this uh, government has failed in terms of uh, handling uh, this pandemic from the onset. I mean, the lackadaisical response to the closing of the of the borders, uh, even the the, the 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 quickness with which the restrictions uh, were eased, the inability to even enforce the directives when it comes to the misconduct of uh, appointees and public officials and party officials. I mean, the whole. Let, let, let's so, make progress. Let's make progress and talk about education. We have no, limited it, time. Right. What, what I'm going to talk about. We we know that uh, uh, on the onset of this pandemic. Uh, schools were closed down, as was the case in other jurisdictions. Uh, in, at that time, the case count was not even uh, in, in excess of uh, 5,000. Uh, very, very small uh, numbers at, at the time. Uh, many of us, when government decided to do so, applauded government. But we had issue because even at the time, government had decided that the final year students should have stayed in school. And as a result of resistance from NAGRAT and teacher un other teacher unions, and indeed, a minority uh, as well. The decision was later made to allow them to, to go home. Um, a few weeks, a few months after, the decision was again made by uh, government through the Ministry of Education that they were going to reopen schools partially to bring the final year students to come and prepare to write their exams. Right. Many of us didn't think it was a good idea. But be as it may, government said it had consulted stakeholders and medical experts and that it was going to put in place certain mechanisms to ensure that the students were protected. They spoke about the provision of PPEs, including sanitizers, uh, running water, Veronica backers, nose masks, uh, and what have you. Then we said, if that is what you have decided to do, you know, in spite of all the caution that we have tried to bring to your notice, looking at other examples in different parts of the world, where they reopen schools, and as a result of the students getting infected, they had to close schools, then one of the things you could do would be to test the students right. and to test all persons who are going to be on those campuses before you allow them to go to the campuses. Well, that they said they were not going to do. Students were allowed to go to school, and we have evidence to show that many of the schools, the students had arrived on campus before the PPEs arrived, mm. before the Veronica Backers arrived, before mm. the nose masks arrived, even before some of the schools were fumigated. 
just about a, a week ago, I was in my constituency. I mm -hmm. came only a few days back. A school in Wiyada had not received PPEs, but it was in session. Indeed, it was the former MPP member of parliament who puts us out, uh, Madame Agnes Chigabatia, who went to donate PPEs to that senior high school. Could, could it be that they haven't picked their supplies from the district office because we have been assured that the supplies have gone through the regions to the district offices. I, I, so if the I school is not going to pick it, how do you, how do you then blame the school, uh, the, the government for it? The government had promised the teacher unions, and that was the agreement, that these supplies were going to have arrived in the schools at least a week before schools reopened. So why is it that we are still talking about a late delivery of PPEs and preparation to ensure that the students and, and the instructors can be confident and safe knowing that at least, you know, the promises that government made as a justification for reopening the schools were being fulfilled. So what do you going advise? Forward, what do you advise going forward? Should the children well, stay in we school? Are, we, are, we have been very clear. Uh, uh, the minority put out a statement. We agree with parents. We agree with, with, with the teacher unions. That looking at the numbers so far, looking at the re 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 reports that are coming in, indicating that it is not only Accra girls, but several schools are recording cases of COVID-19. The best thing is to close the schools down. Because if the motive for reopening the schools mm. is to prepare the students to write exams, in this type of situation, how are they even going to have the right frame of mind to be able to study? They are terrified. So how, do we, how do we assess them well, then? How do we assess them to make them move on to the next stage of the academic ladder? Well, like in many other countries, we truly, I don't see the justification why the Akufo government is insisting that the students must write the exam this year under these very terrifying conditions. Other countries, rightly so, have made the conscious decisions to postpone the right. <laughs> and there's no reason why we cannot do that. Mm. Look, it is safety first. As one parent told me, he would rather prefer his ward is at home to be an illiterate than to send that ward to school, a school where he cannot be sure of the safety okay. of his work. All right. This is the kind of, this is the situation that we are facing. Okay. Thank, are let, let's bring in Pius at this point. Pius, welcome. So, uh, does it make sense, if you will, to keep the students in school? We're reading that Bost had recorded some cases, and so the office has been shut down. Cocoa Board recorded some cases. Uh, the office has been shut down. Many others have recorded cases and I've asked that people stay away. In fact, on that same score, the president is self-isolating because somebody close to him, the education minister, and many others. Now, does it make meaning to have the schools in session when their own colleagues are recording cases in the school? That's the question that the parents are asking. Does it make sense? Well, thank you very much, uh, Johnny. I'll take it uh, one comment at a time, and please indulge me. Okay. I'll begin with uh, what you read from Mr. Franklin Kujo. Unfortunately, I see his positioning uh, to be rather not forward-looking. Really? Uh, it is a very stagnant view to hold of issues. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, it, is, uh, it exposes a certain lack of understanding of what is described all over the world as the new normal. And let me establish from the word go that as we speak, nobody, including Mr. Franklin Kujo, including Dr. Clementa Park, knows how far or how long mm. uh, this COVID-19 will remain with us without us finding a cure or a vaccine for it. Right. However, I think that it is uh, the, 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 if you may, the laziest approach would be to just a close shop and grant to a halt. And having listened, and I continue to listen to the NDC, the impression I get is that if the NDC was in power today, we would just have closed shop and have shut down, and that is it. I mean, for me, the positioning of the NDC is a threat to our collective existence and our collective relevance as a country and a people mm. in the world order. And I don't think that... I see any serious thinking happening. For them, let us close our borders. Let's close schools. Let's close this. Let's close this. Let TV stations and radio stations shut down. And then that is it. We have ground to a halt because there's COVID-19. It tells you that there's, there, there's not deep thinking about 
what are the ways uh, in which we can still lead a life close to normal without necessarily uh, imperiling public life and endangering public life. How, how do you justify? How do you safety. justify what you're so saying, I mean, Pius? I'll, I'll come to, Pius, I'll hold come on. To all the questions. How do you justify I'll, I'll what? The hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll come to all of them. Allow, allow me, allow me, please. How do you justify what you're saying now with what, for example, the minority is suggesting that uh, shut down this, shut down that? to what is happening. And I just gave you two examples. Bost belongs to the government. Cocoa Board I'll, belongs to I'll the government. To and they have shut down because they have had a few cases. I'll, I'll come to that. Mm. I'll come to that. I'll come to that. I'll come to that. And just for the just quick reaction, there are several offices of Bost working across this country. There's one or two offices here and there uh, that have been shut down temporarily for a, a limited number of days. I'll come to those ones. But I'm saying that Leadership is about what uh, practices, okay, what policies are you introducing so that even in the midst of this crisis, the country continues to exist, the people survive, they are able to feed, we are able to be, remain relevant on the world stage, once at the same time, life is being protected. Mm -hmm. And is life being protected in Ghana? Yes. If you check the mortality rate compared to all countries on the on, on, on the African continent and in the globe. You, con you compare our positivity rate, you compare our uh, 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 recovery rate, mm. you compare our uh, even positive cases. You do all the analysis, you come to the conclusion that, yes, we are protecting public life, whilst at the same time, we haven't shut down markets, for instance. Mm. People go to the markets, the schools, we have done some partial closure we students who are the future of this country. And I'm surprised that Honorable uh, Clement Park and the NDC carry the attitude that the future of, the, of, of this country, the, 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 our youth, the mm. students who are in school today, we should use COVID-19 as an excuse to curtail their future. Couldn't we, we have assessed them differently? And a global economy. Couldn't so we have assessed them differently using their cumulative record, for example, giving them some let, essays let, to let write me, from let, home? Well, we, 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 we also want to position them globally competitive. Okay. And so we, we have thought through all these options and we think that uh, the uh, uh, examinations sanctioned by uh, international bodies such as the West African Examination Council and so on and so forth uh, will make our, our, our pupils and our students internationally competitive mm. and will also not curtail their uh, subsequent development Going forward. But okay, respond, that, respond, see, respond quickly, Pius. I beg you, because we run out of time. Respond quickly to uh, the two issues that you raised, and then we can go. Because you have had four go, minutes now, so so respond to it, and then we can go. I beg you. We have run out of time. So so clearly, there has not been any initia on the part of this government. I've shared to have I've shared abundance evidence with you to indicate to you that we have acted from the very beginning mm. with a lot of dispatch. We have taken steps to limit importation, and my brother speaks about closure of the borders. If mm. you check around the world, when countries close borders and when Ghana closed, we acted with dispatch. There was no inertia at all. Before the schools, uh, the, the schools were open for the final years to go in, at the secondary level, over 1,167 schools were fumigated. We had provided over uh, 800,000 uh, 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 students, administrators, and te non-teaching staff with PPEs. And I have been to several schools where I have seen evidence of PPEs having arrived way in advance of the school. So why are some of the schools and complaining? As a member of parliament, he also had a role to say again. So why are some of the schools complaining? Well, I, I haven't heard any school complain. I'm just hearing this morning, Honorable uh, Dr. Clementa Park making reference to a school in his constituency. Uh, I am advice of the details of that but i'm very hesitant to take it from him okay because the attitude of the ndc uh, is to uh, to uh, 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 miscommunicate and misinform so uh, i think his uh, uh, his statement with a pinch of salt these matters have to be uh, interrogated mm -hmm. but you are right that from the center all these ppes have been dispatched the military has been uh, uh, called in to assist uh, they have been dispatched to the regions i'm informed that all the ppes have been uh, have been further dispatched from the regions to the various dis, uh, districts okay. for further distribution to the schools. Okay. And I have been to schools myself, several schools, and I've seen the PPEs uh, being there. But speaking 
directly to the situation with Accra girls. And it is also not true that uh, a lot of the schools have recorded cases. In fact, a lot of the media reports that we have heard about uh, outbreak of cases are turning out to be uh, either Accra uh, Academy, Addisadel College, Accra across, Girls. Across the list is there. But in the case of in the case of uh, the Accra Girls, uh, Accra, Accra Girls, mm. yes, uh, there are six cases for students. There are two, and he talks of testing. And we have said time and over again that testing is not immunization. In the case of Accra, Accra Girls, you could have tested, but the, 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 the teacher who commutes from home to school every day, okay. whose wife goes to the market, mm. anything could have, even if you had tested the students, that is not a guarantee against okay. the, the virus coming into the system. Pius, and I thank you. Why we have taken the steps we have taken to match to match every school okay. to a hospital okay. or to a health uh, post. I, I thank you. I, I thank we you. Have we have to, we, we have to go. Uh, uh, hello. We, we have to go. Thank you very much, Pius, for your time this morning. I'm grateful. Uh, there's a love letter from uh, lawyer James Sajenim Boatim for you. It says the Akufado government has not added the water supply infrastructure or to the water supply infrastructure in any meaningful that, way. True. The free water was we made possible. Several water systems. Okay, allow me to read the love letter to you. It says, well, the Akufado well, 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 government has well, not... You will allow me to respond, I guess. Yeah, so I, I, I'll give you 30 seconds. The Akufado-led government has not added to the water supply infrastructure in any meaningful way. The free water was made possible because John Mahama invested in the expansion of water supply. The government cannot take credit for what it has not invested in. On the matter of COVID-19, the NDC has done more. Every parliamentary candidate in the NPP and uh, NDC MP has supported the health facilities, police stations, markets, etc. And they're saying that uh, they're sleeping on the job, dangerous decisions you're making, uh, and pious should not offload their poor judgment and failures on the NDC.